Thank you very much for joining the Planning a Mobile Learning Project presentation. And thank you to all the MobiMOOC participants who entered the synchronous live sessions and especially one the ones entering the second presentation because it took some patience from all of us. Now, this presentation is linked to MobiMOOC 2012, the free online course on mobile learning. So it might be that the last slides are not relevant to everybody or to all viewers. Nevertheless, let me start with introducing myself. My name is Inge de Waard. I work at the Institute of Tropical Medicine in Antwerp, Belgium, and I have been involved in mobile learning and online learning projects with healthcare, healthcare workers in developing regions. Now we have developed uh, several mobile uh, projects and I will focus a little bit deeper on those projects in another session during the third week of MobiMOOC, but in this case I will just focus on how to set up a mobile learning project and which factors to take into account. I work with a very small team, so we need to be creative and we strengthen each other because we are an interdisciplinary team. So if you are just a couple of people in your organization wanting to start mobile learning projects, or even if you're alone, it can work. You just need to be a little bit more patient and plan a little bit more efficiently, but it, it works. Now there are 11 steps towards an M-learning project, or so those are the ones that I define. There, will, there can be any number of steps. I will go through them very quickly here because I will focus more in depth on the following slides. Now, it's very important to define a clear goal for your mobile learning project. It's also important to get all the stakeholders involved, target audience, but also managers or district uh, leaders and something like that. It is also important to plan your learner dynamics to look at the pedagogical model you will uh, most likely be using based upon your target audience. Also, have a look at the mobile infrastructure or the infrastructure in general in the target area you want to roll out your project. And of course, look at the techni uh, technological situation of your target audience and their digital or mobile literacy or skills. Knowing the above uh, core steps, let's say, it is also important to get a little bit deeper into the project, thinking about security issues, whether or not you're going to provide a mobile device or you're going to let the learners come with their device or the device that are they are using. It's also important to think about how you're going to design the content. Are you going to go outside, ask uh, organizations specialized in the developing content or designing content? Are you going to do it yourself? If so, will you be using authoring tools? Will you be developing something? Will you just gather social media and import it in your mobile project and so on? It's also important to think about a strategy up front. So how will you deliver the uh, content? How will you make sure that people know that there is new content published? And of course, you almost must also need to define some kind of user policies. What are users uh, allowed to do? Um, which type of content can be shared between users if that is part of your project, if it's a peer-to-peer -peer project, and so on. Now, if you would like a more in-depth look, I added a s blog post on it. And feel free to add some of your own because I'm just one person and I know the benefit of collaboration, of uh, exchanging ideas. So never hesitate to add your ideas as well. Now I feel it's very important if you enter into a mobile project that you start from a need. Starting from a need means that there is definite motivation from your target audience from the start. So it's good to start from that and especially with the first mobile project because it will be quintessential that whichever project you launch, the first project will be the focus of future projects or will enable you to be allowed to produce follow-up projects. 
So make sure it's based on the need. Now it could be that the need is so big that once you start writing up your project goal, you're going to have to focus on the one specific part of the complete need. It's good to do that. Really define your goal. It's going to orientate your mind in your brain and all the rest of your uh, project and get it on the rails. So let's say if you have if you want to create financial awareness or an ex action strategy for women in poor and challenged uh, situations okay define it make it as clear as possible now it's also interesting to fine tune which m learning feel uh, your project will relate to because that way it's easier to find similar projects or to learn from research that has been done in that particular area or to build on expertise or even better link to the people who have started with those mobile projects in that particular area because they will have much more expertise than they even uh, shared or consciously shared with the uh, all of us or with you in particular. So it's good to connect. Now, depending on the field you have chosen, you will also see that there, is, there are specific mobile aspects which are more beneficial to that particular field than others. If you want to address uh, dyslectic uh, learners, it's better to use visuals. Um, if you want to address like something um, research or mobile learning in the field where the people get uh, or the learner gets some experience standing inside a specific region you might want to consider using augmented reality or at least GPS because then you can really fine-tune the content uh, itself and so on so it's clear that you need to really get to know your target audience. Which devices do they have? Which type of mobile literacy is available? Ha do they have actually uh, access to mobile devices? Or and if so, screen it. What are the possibilities of those mobile devices? And if possible, try to get them inside of the project as well as you are describing it. It will empower them and it will give them more trust uh, and the feeling of being part of the community, not just being guinea pigs in on which some researcher gets, uh, gets to them and asks them to do all sorts of stuff which they don't understand anyway. So get them from early on. It will build trust. Now, this slide is added on top of the presentation I had first because of a remark I got uh, or a question that I got. The question was if I want to set up a mobile project for K-12 students, but of course there are different levels to what a student can do depending on their age groups. Now, I have a similar experience of uh, addressing different levels of participation in the mobile learning project, meaning that there is, uh, I have been involved in a mobile learning project targeting diabetic uh, medic relief or, or support, let's say. And then I had, the, then there are the patients and there are the healthcare workers and there are the clinical managers. So there were three levels of engagement, meaning that all those three levels need to get different types of uh, content. And which means that if they enter into the mobile project or uh, the content specifically, they need to see what is relevant for them. So it's also something to know if you uh, are targeting different groups of target learners that you keep it in the back of your mind that you will probably need different entry levels or at least different disseminations of the content or the activities. So it's important to engage all stakeholders, not, of course, not only the target audience, but also funding uh, agencies, ministries of education, telecom operators, leaders of a community, all those kinds of stuff. And it's similar with the target audience. Get them 
involved from early on. They will know things you don't think about. They will see that you are willing to uh, tailor to some of the demands, not all of the demands, of course. That, oh, well, if you can, please do. But sometimes you will think, uh, well, this is feasible, this isn't. So it's good to at least get a dialogue going. That way everybody can see how it rolls out and the second time you're trying to get some funding for a mobile learning project, it will be easier because of the clear, transparent process. In order to get people involved, of course, you need to prepare your pitch. Not, it's, well, it's, kind of a marketing strategy, but I think it's very important that you can be very concise when people ask you what are you willing to do. And if possible, create some kind of visual scenario so people can immediately see what you are willing to describe. And it's also it's good to keep it close at hand, that scenario. The infrastructure also needs to be analyzed, and that's not only because I mentioned the analysis of your target population and the types of groups you're willing to address, but this is the same is true for infrastructure from the technical side. So which type of mobile devices? Is there electricity, stable electricity in the area? Is there mobile internet access? If not, there are solutions for it. You can use uh, mobile Wi-Fi routers to get communities uh, access to content. There are solutions for most of the problems. Now there's also a possibility that you work in areas where the some or part of the internet will be let's say filtered or in a more negative way censored and it's good to know it from early on. Like with us we have at the Institute we have a conference which is planned in uh, China in Beijing, but uh, all of a sudden we saw that Facebook was no longer an option, Google was no longer an option, Twitter was no longer an option, so what we did, we had to look for a solution that would allow us to get content out, although those channels were blocked. Now we actually find, uh, found a way to do it, so it's always good to know these things in advance and plan some possible uh, solutions. Then there's, of course, the cost of the complete project. Now, you it's good to define the cost of setting up the project, of uh, realizing it, the cost to maintain the project, and the cost for the user to engage in the project. All of these costs will define a part of the success of a mobile learning project. Now, it doesn't, any project, even if you go really uh, what is perceived as high-end, so smartphones or tablets and with um, social media tools and with all those kinds of things happening, it doesn't need to be very expensive, but you need to be creative and you need to uh, communicate with others who have been uh, have some experience just to get the cost down or at least have a good argumentation of why uh, certain costs appear. I can't stress it enough the importance of a durable mobile learning project. If everybody, like in Europe, they are uh, celebrating the idea of li lifelong learning and it's a concept uh, that was available in continued education for a long time in different fields anyway. But so it is important that if you build a mobile project that it's adaptable, at least adaptable and that it's uh, built on some kind of strong or in most best possible way strong enough to withstand a bit of time or the years to come. So make sure, for instance, what I think is an important issue is to work with bring your own device uh, concept. You look at what the learner audience has and you use those devices. And also if you build some mobile learning content, keep it in small sizes. It makes it easier to update, it makes it easier to change if something in the mobile devices uh, changes. So it will give you an edge or bring you closer to a sustainable project. 
once you have all these factors into consideration, it is time to break down your uh, mobile learning goal into very nice small steps. What do you think will make up the complete mobile learning project? Interviews with target audiences, some funding that needs to get uh, in, developing some uh, skills, mobile, digital or other. So really try to get all the steps that will make up your mobile learning projects and then you're ready to plan. Put those steps into a timeline, but make sure that you keep some kind of leniency in your timing, because no matter what, you will face challenges at some point or other. Maybe managers say, ah, I would like to see you add some assessment, or I would like to make sure that the parents of the students in the classroom agree with the fact that they will be using mobile devices in the classroom all those kinds of stuff and even the simple administrative procedures can take up more time than you would expect at up front now as i told you at the beginning of this presentation Parts of this presentation are linked to MobiMOOC, the free and online course on mobile learning, and those slides start here. So in MobiMOOC we have a $500 award for that type of mobile learning project which will have the most human impact. Um, because in many cases, uh, Funding is available for bigger projects or for academic projects or, well, um, some major things. But the smaller, personal, maybe even targeted to minority groups kind of projects fall out of that uh, financial support. So, uh, with the facilitators around the table and everything, we thought, why not make a $500 MobiMOOC award for the project with the most human impact and as such we do it. Now what does this mean? This means that you need to get your template for the mobile learning project drafted at least uh, before 25th of September to, uh, in in to be included in the discussion forum on specifically those mobile learning projects or send it to the MobiMOOC Google group if you prefer that or if you aren't that sure of your first draft just send it to me and I will gladly give feedback. The quicker you do it the easier it is to make a really strong mobile learning project and once you feel that your draft is strong enough it is good to share it with all the other participants because that way we can collaboratively strengthen each of those mobile learning projects and it will make all of us stronger once we start with our own project. So there are some steps and I will come back at those steps uh, later on. Um, as I said, I think collaboration will make all of us, uh, all of our pro projects stronger. And so these are the steps. Get hold of the M-Learning project overview. This can be done, uh, found on the wiki page, the course wiki page or you can do it uh, downloading the Google document. You write up a workable draft, you share it with the group, uh, either through the discussion forum or the MobiMoo group. And I forgot to link it, I see, so I'm going to change that. And then you, or you can send it to me, Inge, before the 23rd of September. But anyway, all the drafts or the ones that you think are ready to be published, can be sent with the title Final M-Learning Overview and possibly your name and then I will make sure that it's up there in the form where people and people meaning the MobiMOOC participants can choose which type or which project will get the $500 MobiMOOC award for most promising human impact mobile learning project. Okay. Now as I said before, it could be that I'm missing big things or that you have questions regarding mobile learning uh, planning. If so, feel free to contact me, ask me questions, uh, get in, have a look at the projects that I have been involved in or just 
get connected because I like to be connected anyway. So thank you for your attention and hope to see you in the next coming days, weeks, months, years and for a very durable long time. Thank you.